Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back from my vacation in Vegas. Technically, yesterday's video is when I came back, but since that's 13 nights of Halloween, it's never, they never do as well as these Fago ones. So I'm back and ready to do, talk about Fago after my brother covered for me. And what are we gonna be talking about today? It's the Tamlin pre-release campaign. Uh, I guess the Tamlin Cup is the full name of it, which is going to feature, most importantly, a rerun of Morgan. So let's go right into it. First off, as you can see here, it will start on October 31st and it will go into November 7th. And if we look at the JP version of the game, we can see when it started on November 2nd and ended on November 9th. That's when Tamlin Cup. We also, uh, or the Caldea Fairy Cup Nights started. Caldea Fairy Night Cup. Tam, I forgot that they translated it as Tamlin. There was a whole thing about it. Anyway, with seventh millions is when Lotto Grind starts once again for everyone. So make sure to get ready for it all. So let's take a look at what's going on in here. So in the Caldea Tam Lin Cup, just to cover this stuff first, because it needs to be covered, it will have a login bonus, which over seven days, you'll get seven golden apples. In times of limited time campaigns, all daily quests will be unlocked and one half AP for interludes and rank ups they really want you to get saint quartz ready if you are not prepared for morgan uh there's also social media campaign which will run which is currently ongoing it's going from the 28th until november 6th so actually november 6th okay yes so that means that the game will go down and then when maintenance comes up it will be on the 7th okay i understand it so uh, time zones are funky. Technically, for me, this event starts uh, near the end of six because of all my weirdness. You'll get we'll also get six, six sync quartz from that. We almost always reach it. Uh, limited time master missions. Clear any advanced quest one, two, or three times, and you'll get five silver foes for attack and HP, along with three million QP. And finally, the actual reason for the season, the entire reason I'm talking about this. Morgan will be showing up on Halloween. The ultimate <laughs> scary surprise you're gonna have to summon for Morgan now if you like Morgan. And trust me, a vast majority of people like Morgan. So, uh, before we actually go into the uh, unit, the one CE that's on <laughs> uh, right up with her is Valentine Witches, which is a CE that ignores invincibility. Gives MP damage plus 20% and MP gain, which an ignore invincibility C is actually very clutch, especially if you don't have the free-to-play option ones, which is the 50% one and the other one. The one that from Valentine's as well, as well that had Arjuna and um, Altera on it, I believe. Um, so I always like having ignore invincibility C's on it, and plus this is very cute art. Uh, probably not worth 100% going for if that's your main goal. More of a very nice bonus as you go for Morgan. Now... Morgan, yes, this is Morgan, Morgan Le Fay, um, she is a berserker, she has one quick, two arts, two busters, four hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra, her active skills are Charisma of Desire B, which is an increase to party's attack for three turns, a charging to own MP gauge, and then a, redu a reduction of all enemy defense for three turns, 20% to attack, 30% to NP, and 30% down to defense on a cooldown of six. Her second skill is by default, uh, this one, which I won't show after clearing Avalon Le Fay in case you want to catch up to the story. Uh, charges one ally's MP gauge uh, is protection of the lake. Charges one ally's MP gauge increases party's MP generation rate for three turns. 20% um, to MP, MP rate up is 25% and the cooldown is 5. Her third skill is beyond the furthest end A. Grant self uh, gut status for one time 3 turns. Increases on crit star uh, absorption for 3 turns. Increases on crit damage for 3 turns. Grant self a regeneration buff for 3 turns. Reduces all enemies attack for 1 turn every turn for 3 turns. Reduces their critical attack chance for 1 turn every turn for 3 turns. And then gains crit stars, revives with 3000 HP, the absorption is 500%, the crit damage is 30%, the attack down is 20%, the crit chance the lowering is 20%, and the star she gains is 15 on a cooldown of 7 because this thing does at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different things <laughs> over the course of 3 turns. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement B, Magic Resistance A, Item Construction EX, Territory Creation B, and Fey Eyes A, which is an increase to critical attack chance resistance by 20%. 
Her second skill is... Her third skill is an anti-saber critical attack chance resistance because trust no one, not even your own sister on this one. And her noble phantasm, which is rank EX, is the roadless Camelot, the now unreachable Utopia. It's a rank EX noble phantasm, anti-fortress, buster, hits six times, increases own damage against a round table or fey enemies by 50% for one turn, activates first, Deals damage to all enemies, inflicts curse status uh, with 1,000 damage for 5 turns to them, overcharges party's MP by 1 stage for 1 time, 3 turns, uh, at MP level 1 it's 300% damage, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5 it's 500%, and her overcharge effect is 150% bonus damage to the man attribute, and if you get that to the final charge level that is 200%, she also does have a costume where she wears a kind of... Uh, witch hoodie thing, which is what she wears in Lost Belt 6. So, that's Morgan, um, to cut, to make a long story short and then to go into more details, yes, she is very good. She is probably, uh, one of the best berserkers in the game currently. Not in terms of pure damage. If you're looking for pure damage, the, obviously the best one for, uh, Buster, uh, for Buster is still going to be Arjuna Alter. Uh, if you want something just straight up dead, um, you go with him. And the same is true if you want something for <laughs> arts and the uh, quick, which would be Senno Rikyo, Rikyo and um, Summer Ibuki. But what she does offer is a lot of different, <laughs> a lot of different things that can also help a lot of a lot of the party. If that makes sense, it doesn't really make sense, but I'll explain it right now. Let's start with the first skill. This first skill is excellent because it increases the entire party's attack along with charging her own MP gauge and then also reducing uh, the enemy defense. Um, <clears throat> the second skill can be useful if you want to specifically buff an ally. Let's say that you don't actually need the 20% MP because you have a starting 50%er uh, and then your second skill, mana loading, is fully dealt up. That means that you only realistically need the first skill to get 100% with Renewable Phantasm. So you can use this one as kind of a pseudo protection, but and even if you don't use it as that, it's, you can use it to increase the party's MP generation rate, which can help with uh, help out a lot of quick units and a lot of arts units. Usually more so quick than arts, but, but it, it benefits both of them. Um, and this third skill is excellent on defense, um, which is something that a lot of Berserkers need. Uh, if they're looking, uh, first of all, if you're a Berserker without guts, you're really, you have to really go out of your way to protect them. The nice thing about this move is that not only does it provide you with guts, it also provides you with a less chance of being hit by a critical attack and then also redu or reducing the enemy's attack. Um, for three turns, which can be, it can be extremely, extremely useful. Um, I originally, when I saw it, I was like, ah, this is kind of a nice little niche effect that I'm never going to use. But in practice, when I've actually used her in a little bit more challenging combat that didn't just instantly loop for three turns, this ability right here of hers made it so that I wouldn't be taking very much damage. It was very nice, especially if you're someone using double Morgan. So all her skills are excellent, but the way that they work together is also... Oh, and her Noble Phantasm, by the way. Her Noble Phantasm is excellent if you are specifically going against a Round Table Knight or a Fey enemy, because that means they are going to basically be dead. I'm pretty sure if you're going against any of the Round Table members, it's basically an insta-kill, because they're also likely to have the man attribute. I actually am curious to see how many of the um, Round Table members don't have a man attribute. I want to say almost all of them do. It's going to be funny if it turns out absolutely none of them actually do. <laughs> and I was just... I could have swore they did. Is Lancelot not considered a man? What? Is, what? The very least, Saber is on here. I know that much. Let me see. If I go here... Oh, Earth. Okay, that makes sense. So if you go here... She is also Earth. Mor Mordred is Earth. Gawain is... Mm, I was going to say male, but that is not... It's also Earth. Okay, so maybe not as much. Okay, my bad on that one. Overestimated on that one. But still, she would be doing a lot of damage. And if you're ever going against someone with the man attribute, she is going to be doing a buttload of damage to them. With the big drawback being that if she is at MP level 1... Um, she really relies on doing extra damage to specifically the man attribute enemies, because if she doesn't do that, she does a lot less damage. 
Um, now the way to actually use Morgan, you can use her in one of two ways. Obviously she's excellent at looping because her two main skills, even though this skill is on a cooldown of seven, it doesn't matter because these two skills are the only two that you would ever use for looping because both of them can give her 50% up. So therefore she can be used with the classic two Koyans and an Oberon. She doesn't even really need to be used with Oberon unless you need the damage. And, or if you don't have Oberon, you can substitute someone else out there to give her a little bit of help or even with other specific CEs, maybe not even have to go into the other unit. So it's very easy to kind of loop with her. I remember talking to someone of why they thought that Morgan was better than Arjuna Alter, and it was the idea that Arjuna Alter only gets 30% back, so it makes him a little bit more difficult for someone who is starting out in the game because they need to make sure to get Koyanskaya and then Oberon. Um, but with Mor in Morgan's case, it wasn't like that, so it made her feel much more consistent than him. Even though he had both of them, he ended up using Morgan a whole bunch more. Uh, so she fits perfectly into buster looping but she also does kind of function extremely well in multi-core teams the reason why is that her noble phantasm increases the overcharge of every member of the of the party by one stage for one time three turns obviously the first three starting members that makes her extremely clutch in a lot of core teams if you don't know what a multi-core team let me just explain it right now Basically, uh, it's similar to a, it's a new, it's another form of a loop team, except for in multi-core, what you're really doing is you're you're not using any of the big supporters like Astoria, Koyan, and um, Summer Scotty, and instead just using pure DPS units to kind of beat the stage itself and not have to worry about it. Um, and Morgan is excellent at that because Morgan not only can do a lot of damage with her Noble Phantasm if you are hitting against the man attribute or you're specifically fighting a round table knight or a fey enemy, but her first skill can also be used to increase party's attack and then also reduce the, the defense of enemies to make it easier to kind of kill the first stage there without having to crazy raise up the attack of everyone else. Um, and the overcharge can come in extremely useful for a lot of um, other noble phantasms that gain more damage. One of the examples I use a bunch because this is one of the teams I used for a vast majority whenever I use Morgan for grinding some specific nodes is I like using her with Arash because with the overcharge effect you can actually get 200% bonus charge on this which will let him deal further additional damage just as easy. So you would go in with Morgan on turn one then go in with um, Ardash turn two, and then if you were, so for example, on the five EXP node, or the last unit in the in the in the in the enemy team is a really big one, then you can use your single target, and you can kind of go in there. Um, and obviously, the in this case with Morgan, it is possible to do it at MP level one. I have been able to do it in the past, but for a lot of the new like 90 plus plus, that's where you're gonna kind of need a lot more noble phantasm levels. And if you are willing to invest in Morgan and get more of those, I think you'll find an excellent farmer, an excellent unit to be used in challenge quests, and just an overall really good unit who is also a part of one of the best stories in the entire game. <laughs> There's a reason that she's a fan favorite and she was the first unit to kind of break the uh, the summer mold in that she got the, actually no, she wasn't the first summer unit that got a summer outfit that was not actually a summer unit. It's technically Lady Avalon. But she is the first uh, anniversary unit that also got turned into a uh, summer unit kind of out of nowhere. No one was expecting it when she, the, the anniversary unit that's going for this year is also Summer Morgan. It's complicated. Um, read the story. Read Lost Belt 6. It'll all make sense. Um, but anyway, Morgan, really, really good unit. Um, excellent for new players. Excellent for kind of players who've been playing for a while. If you're someone who's been set up, for example, if you have Arjuna Altar and you're already saying, like, we'll already have a damage dealer and I'm not really interested in multi-core farming and stuff like that, uh, because either because in order for her to deal more damage, you would then need to get probably more MP copies to match up with Arjuna Altar. Then I guess it's not really for you. That, and that's fine. Um, I still think Morgan is extremely worth having and also definitely going for her is something that can be easily justified in your mind. Now, that being said... Uh, <laughs> It's good to keep in mind that even though she is coming on October 31st, that does not mean that she is the only good unit coming up in the month because Castoria is actually returning um, in November. Uh, so we can look here. 
we can go to Japan, uh, and we can go all the way down here, and we can go to two years past when they got it. And we can see here for Lost Belt support right here that um, Artoria Caster is going to be coming back in November, and she is a, without a doubt one of the best units in the game, if not the best unit. I could very easily see the case of someone going like, no, Castoria is the best. And I think actually she is the best if I were to put every factor together and say, if there was one single unit I would say in this game, if you could automatically start with it and have a excellent time going forward, it would probably be Castoria. Um, which is going to be a little bit weird because for some people it's the DPS unit, but for me, it I go with the supports technically because Castoria is such a good support that it's possible to use a friend and then another, um, use Zufu and then use a friend's DPS and you'd be able to loop with that. That's just kind of insane when you put, <laughs> when you really think about it, that there's some units that can still three turn loop with just a single Castoria and a Zufu. It's, it's just kind of nuts. The, the level of versatility that comes with that is insane. So if you're someone who is looking forward to Castoria and you were to ask me specifically, Woki, which one do you go for? I will always say Castoria. But if you're looking for, if you're more l interested in just only going for Buster units, you don't care about Castoria and you really love Morgan, obviously this is a no brainer. You should summon. And I wish you all the best of luck of summoning. I know for the people who are gonna be going for more copies of her, like go to MP5 and stuff like that, I really wish you guys the best of luck because this seems like a ball breaker to return here. Um, especially if you don't have any of the big units coming up, such as Castoria, Koyanskaya, Oberon, <laughs> Melusain. A lot of really good units coming near the end of the year. And then, of course, when we go into New Year, that does not mean that the new units are going to start or stop. We still have um, Kotomine coming up. We have uh, Tez coming up. We have Cuckoo coming up. We have... Um, uh, Nido Chris Alter, which obviously is not as good as the units I just mentioned, but I really like the design of her and I think she's cool. And then we also have Draco even further into the future if you're someone who is like, I want to be able to get a beast unit because those units are going to be specifically extremely rare to get. It's, it's the tough time now. It's either it's time for you to lock in and get your luck ready or for you to make the hard decisions. Now, I will say, thankfully for everyone, um, Morgan is a very popular character. And as such, Morgan is constantly returning. So if you want to know how long it's going to be for her next banner, well, let's see. Um, because this isn't even the first time she's been here this year. We, she was here for Sea Monster Crisis earlier in the year. Um, let's see, Fairy Knights... Next is spe specific to be, is it around here? No, this is the GSSR. No, one moment as I quickly check to see when's Morgan's next banner. All right, found it. Here's where she's gonna show up again. Next year, she will be back <laughs> with Castoria for to celebrate there being 3000 days. So, and after that, there's currently no signs of a Morgan return. But the thing about NA is that NA really likes to throw out some surprise banner units. I'm going to be surprised if we ever go an entire year without Morgan coming back in some capacity. Um, that's just the NA team loves to throw out random banners to be like, this will really get them to fucking summon. And Morgan is definitely one of those characters where if you just release her, people who are like, oh man, I need more Morgan copies and where I love Morgan are instantly going to kind of lock in and uh, summon for her immediately. So... Uh, but unfortunately, we can't time those at all. But if you want, if you miss her out this year, she'll be back next year. <laughs> so pick your poison. Next year is just as rough as this year. To be one hundred percent real with you, I don't know if there's ever a good time to just like sniff and um, stop and like smell the flowers. Because even around this time, uh, Pedelemaeus is going to be coming out. I don't know if I said his name right, but. Um, Delamayas, yeah, this man, this man's fucking insane, so, uh, you have to <laughs> pick your fights when it comes to Fago. There's only so much planning that you can do, but at least now, if you know when Morgan's gonna come up, you can start saving now, but either way, that's the end of the video, everyone. Hopefully, I was able to at least well enough kind of <laughs> explain how good Morgan is. Um, I always feel weird when I talk about like a lot of the big units because I always feel like I don't say enough about how good they are 
even though a vast majority of this video is just me going, man, Morgan's so fucking good. Let me just actually stop and look at this first skill and just be like, this skill's great, this skill's great, this skill's great. These passes are great. <laughs> these passes are great, even though, you know, no, these passes are great. Um, I guess the one thing you could say, no, that's not even something they can actually say. That's perfectly fine. Even in my head, I'm like trying to come up with something and be like, the only thing that you can ever really say negative about Morgan is the lack of damage at MP level one when she's not fighting someone of the man attribute. Because then you run into some problems of not being able to kill things. I'll say that as someone who has her at MP one and has always been very satisfied with what she's done. That does not mean that I have not run into some very specific, really weird use cases where she was not able to, on a multi-core team, kill the enemy. I've never had that problem when it was a Koyanskaya type of team, um, but definitely I have had it in some really weird uh, use cases in the other side. But Anyway, feel free to tell me how you feel about Morgan if you plan to summon for her. Thankfully, I already got Morgan. I don't have to worry about it, and I'm fine with her at MP1. <laughs> um, no, the buster unit of choice that I'm looking forward to is Cuckoo. And I'm trying to get her to NP5, so trying to get more copies of Morgan just wouldn't really make much sense. <laughs> I would be cannibalizing future stuff, uh, future summon plans, because I'm like, well, I'm really going to focus in on this unit, and once she's NP5, there's really no reason for me to have other kind of units, unless I just kind of want to use them for fun and stuff. But anyway, I think I have yapped on long enough. Thank you very much if you made it to the end of this video. Feel free to, once again, leave a comment if you want to support the channel. You can also leave a like. It does help me out a whole bunch. And look forward to some more videos now that I'm back home from Vegas. I gotta do some other ones that I have to do beforehand. Uh, I gotta do the, the ending month one. <laughs> which I only have a single day, so that video is coming out tomorrow. Um, which I'm glad I waited the single- I was gonna originally plan to do this back yesterday. Back when I was coming home from Vegas, but then I decided to wait because I was tired. So I was like, eh, hey, whatever, I'll wait a day. And that one day wait stopped me from <laughs> making the mistake of saying, ah, oh, you know, Morgan's man is going to be coming up soon, but who knows when. And then the answer is, it's right now. Even though we knew it was always going to be tied to the pre-release um, uh, and stuff like that. But either way, it's, it's good to be back. Um, and also thank you to my brother for covering for me. Um... I'm sorry I didn't have the Binding of Isaac stuff unlocked. I do like the game, I just don't play the 3,000 hours that you and Toast do. Even, even the, my, the, how I beat Binding of Isaac, I did not, I did beat it, like, I think once, but that was the old version, and then the new version for one of the 13 Nights of Halloween videos, I had Toaster Fun, or Toast as we like to call him for shorthand. He just went on a run and just beat it himself. <laughs> just, uh, just randomly just said, like, yo, yeah, I'm gonna beat this now, and he did. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Till next time, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And goodbye. Peace.